Welcome to this demo and walkthrough of the Advanced Cloud Security app for Business Central. Hey, I'm Eric, and in this video, I'm going to take you through the entire app and show you how to use and set up uh, the Advanced Cloud Security app for Business Central. Advanced Cloud Security is an app that enables you to do field level and data level security on top of the regular Business Central security model. This means that you can make sure that certain fields are not available to certain users or certain data in the system is not available to specific users. Um, if you know uh, NAB Easy Security from back in the NAB days, it's kind of the same thing, but for Business Central in the cloud. Anyway, let's, uh, let's get going. So I have a sandbox here and I have advanced cloud security installed this is the main screen this is where you work with security um, the way we do this is basically there are three phases um, and uh, in phase one we define where we want security enabled in phase two we actually deploy the security um, and in phase three we will assign security to users so we can use it um, so let's get started right in phase one so we want to uh, define security and i click define security features and i now have a list of the features that i have created a feature is a bundle a bundle of things that are related from a security perspective, uh, not necessarily technically, but from a security perspective that they belong together and should be assigned together. Um, I, will, uh, I will select the one I have here called uh, customer. And in the bundle, there are four different parts. The first parts are fields. Um, so we can define, in this case, I have defined, uh, let's scroll up so you can see it from my, behind my head here um, I've defined that on the customer table if the address field appears anywhere in your business central and and I do mean anywhere mean that it could appear on something from Microsoft it could appear on something in your customizations made by your partner or it could appear somewhere uh, in in on a page from another app um, advanced cloud secu security doesn't really matter for though from th that perspective it's, it's just a field uh, and I have select that if the address field appear it should be disabled uh, and this again that means on users that gets the customer feature assigned um, the same thing with city no matter where, where it is uh, and, and I have said that should be read only. Uh, disable and read only are kind of the same thing from an end user perspective, but it looks different. Not everything that shows up on a, um, on a screen, on a page is actually a field. Uh, it might be that the field is getting calculated uh, or what you see on, on the screen is something that's calculated getting calculated by by code when the page is open or stuff like that so the actual thing that is shown on the, on the screen we call that a control that's that's just how it is that's the name for it it seems weird but that is the name so a page is built with all these specific controls in this case i have said that on the customer card i want to hide both the balance due and the balance due LCY controls. So if I click the three dots and search for due, we can actually see that balance due LCY is a field because it has a field number. But balance due does not have a field number. So that is just a control that sits on the screen. Um, but with advanced cloud security, you can control both of them. So those were the first two parts of, uh, of our bundle. The next part are actions. And what is an action? Well, in reality, whenever we have, let me open the vendor page for instance, or the vendor list here for a second. 
so when we have things up here, these are not, this is not the menu bar, and these are not menu items in the language of Microsoft at least. This is the action bar, and all these things are actions. Um, so on our security feature, the third component is that we can control actions menu items and I have in this case I have told that on the custom card I want to disable action 76 and on the customer list I want to disable statistics action 76 you say that what, what's that well uh, statistics that's pretty self-explanatory that, that's a nice name but not all actions have great names uh, but we can see that if we go in and look and we can see that action 76 is actually statistics uh, but for some reason uh, it, it's called action 76 on a customer card the same thing you can end up with if you look at, at page controls that these names are very nice some of them look like a math formula and stuff like that uh, so sometimes it can be a, a bit of a hunt to find the uh, what is actually called Anyway, those were the three first components in our bundle. The last component is filters. And um, in this case, I have added a bunch of different filters. Uh, I have told that I will only want to see, I, I will apply a filter on the customer posting group on the customer table. So I will only, if, if a user have this, uh, this security features, this security feature they will only see customers with that specific customer posting group um, what I actually also have here is that I have an abstraction so I, it says UF31 user filter 31 a user filter 31 is actually if you go into the list and look there you can see that's a customer posting group filter so Later on, when we assign this, we can we can use the same security feature, and then we can say that this user has this posting group, and another user has this posting group. So we don't have to create multiple security features. Let's say you have different departments, so instead of having to create multiple features with a specific filter, we have this filter abstraction. Um, I'll get back to how to assign that later. This is also where you have the option we can see the, the the dollar user ID dollar sign here is that's actually the ability for your use yourself or your partner to extend the functionality and say, okay, I want to calculate the filter on the fly for what uh, a user should see. Um, so there's a way for uh, for developer developers to plug into this process. Um, we can see that on the customer posting group table itself, of course, the filter is now on code where, where we're consuming it on different other tables. We're consuming it on, on the field. So this is a bundle and you can have multiple bundles. So let me show you another example here uh, really quick. I have a bundle called item, a feature called item. And it's very simple because there's only one thing in it it hides the unit cost on the item card. So the idea with this is that now you can give this to everyone. Assign this so everyone hide the unit cost. But then there are those three people in, in the purchase department or the CFO who is allowed to see the unit cost of an item. So with that, I have another security feature here called item senior. And this one actually, and let me scroll up so you can see it. This one uh, says show where the others said hide. Um, so the idea is that if we give everyone the hide and then we give the select few who are allowed to see it also the senior, then the senior one, because it has a higher priority over here than this one, this, this show will override this hide uh, so just different ways of, of of giving you options to build these security features without having to really really build a lot of them um, and you can see you can 
there's all sorts of different things. Uh, if we look at dimensions and scroll down uh, to filters, we can actually see that even though we're filtering on dimension value, this uh, advanced cloud security knows that dimensions are special. So we can actually tell them, hey, this is this is only for this dimension we're filtering, but on another dimension, we're doing different filters. So when you're done with phase one, uh, now you have defined where you want security. Uh, but field level security is not, isn't really something that that's doable out of the box from uh, from from uh, Microsoft. So the way it works is that in phase two, we actually going to create an extension. So advanced cloud security has an app builder and an app compiler built in. So in this process, I'm, I'm, not, I'm just going to start it right here. So now it goes through the entire system and looks to see where's this field used? Where's that field used? So everything that you have in security features, it looks through where are those fields actually in the UI and actually also on report because the, the filters will also apply to reports. And as soon as it's done with well, running through the entire system, it will then create an extension. In this case, because I'm in the sandbox, it will also upload the extension to the system and, and hand it over to Microsoft to install it. Um, and this takes a few minutes and that's excellent because then we can uh, then we can discuss a couple of other things. We get a download of the extension. So if we're doing this on a sandbox, we can now take the downloaded extension and just work with this on, on your production without having to basically do phase two on production. You can only you can do phase one and, and two on your sandbox and then upload the configuration and install the extension and you're ready for phase three. There are two uh, curveballs uh, when you, it gets to, uh, to phase two that are important to discuss. One is that you might need to tell the system that you are using stuff from other apps. Uh, let's see if I have something in here. I have told that, hey, I am applying security to something in Continua document capture. So you have to tell ACS that you have done this because it, it, in some cases it knows, hey, this field comes from another app. In other cases, it cannot figure out where, where things come from. So you have to help it. Uh, and you do that by going to the list here and, and say, hey, I use something from, from this app. Uh, and thereby your extension takes a dependency on the other app. The other problem, and this is this is this is where it gets a little bit quirky, uh, is that we're we're creating an app basically that will show field or hide fields and make them uh, read only or not read only and so on. But that does not prevent another app from doing the exact same thing. Uh, and the first time you run an Ask Cloud Security, it will detect and see. Where are the fields that are some other apps are, are are working with, and it will then create a list called problem fields. And uh, and the default reaction is that if if a field is controlled by somebody else, we're not going to mess with it because we, we might break stuff, uh, and and we don't want to do that. So the field gets added to a list called the problem fields. Um, and a great example of this is on page. 16 the chart of account there's a f we got a net change field but if we go into the general ledger setup and scroll down and then there is a uh, where it's right there there is a um, a field called show amounts and the idea with show amounts is that if you say that it should show debit credit they will not show the net change if you say amounts only will not show debit credit so there is functionality built into the main uh, the base app of business central saying uh, well it will select the right columns for you so if you want to hide net change from your users uh, then 
Så sidder de, de er meget klart security, og siger, no, you, 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 somebody else is messing with that, there's a problem field. But what you can do on the problem field list here is that you can go in and say, huh, we can see that there's something else that is, is working with, uh, with visible, the setting visible on this field. So the default, uh, let me edit, the default is that we will exclude this field. So we will exclude it from uh, being part of permissions. But you can say, okay, we will take over the control of this field. So we will say, okay, we will use it, use it for security. And by that, we are overriding what, in this case, the base app will do to its own field. Uh, the only thing that's left for us uh, to complete is that we don't know the the system will not know what is the default state is it visible by default or, or hidden by default so in this case you will have to say uh, when we take over control what is the default state of the field without any security applied so i'll say use visible and then now the advanced cloud security will override the other app uh, this This is the quirky part, and and there is a uh, you gotta sit down for uh, for a, uh, for an hour or so and play with this and figure out how it works. Uh, this is this is where it can get complicated simply because we are living in this multi-app uh, reality now. Um, so so it it's it's tough to uh, for me to, to to define the rules, and therefore I have opened it up. So you can define the rules um, instead. So we can uh, we deploy this one. So uh, let's go into installation status. Just take a quick look if we're done. And this is the the top line here. And I click refresh, and version 53 of our extension is now installed, completed. If you want to know, hey, hang on, what, what is my extension named and so on, you can always go into setup and you can see the same things in here. Uh, you can see where, what object numbers it's going to use. And if you have something that where it should not uh, try to add security, you can add it to that. So now we're done with phase two. Well, there's, there's one slight thing that if you have multiple companies, because extensions are per environment so now the extension is and all it goes for all companies so what you, you need to do is to sync to other companies if you have them that will make sure that the security features are available uh, and synced up in in all your companies so we go from phase two to phase three now and and this is a sign um and a sign you have three options And, and you can combine them as you will. The first option, and, and, and assignments are per company. So if you have multiple companies, you can go into another company and make different assignments depending on, because one salesperson might have one set of, of, uh, of filters in, uh, in, in, in one company and something else in another company. So the first thing I'm going to do is that I can, I can tell that let me find myself i think I'm, i'm i'm this eric right now so i have customer the one uh, we created that assigned and also the dimension test so those are assigned directly to me this is perhaps the worst way to do it because then you need to assign them very individually the other way is to assign this to groups so you can let's see accountants has item assigned here in this case Um, and accountants are uh, so whatever group you have assigned, you'll get the uh, you you'll get the security features associated with it. Uh, BC twenty four and going forward, then the groups are security groups, and backwards it's the old user groups. The last way is to assign them to a. To a user, uh, sorry, to piggyback on a permission set. So, so if a user gets a specific permission set, they will get the associated um, 
security feature also. This is quite often the, the best way of doing because then you're kind of in sync with what you do on, on regular Business Central permission. And it's important to mention that Advanced Cloud Security works on top of Business Central Security. It does not replace it. It does not circumvent it or anything. So you got to have Business Central Security in, in place working, and then you add the high fidelity of field level and data level security on top of this. Um, we can go in and uh, in here say show effective security, and I find myself See what has actually been applied to me. Um, and now we can see that I got my customer. The customer dot address field is disabled. So it is read only. Balanced you are hidden. Actions are disabled. I got a bunch of filters uh, that apparently I got domestic. Because if I go and look at my user filters here, then we can see I think I'm the Earring in the middle, uh, we can see that I have no. Those are departments. That's not. I have domestic as my as my customer posting group. So, I guess the only thing that's left is let's let's see how it looks. So I go into customer, and uh, the, the the there's a lot of junk in here, but but the base. Uh, demo data in Kronos is that there are five customers. We can only see three of them. So two of them has been filtered away. And I can try to open the filter thing and see if I, I can I can be clever and say, okay, I want to see the 40,000 and it's it's not there. So filter the data is filtered away. If I open a, a, a customer card here, um, we cannot see the balance view fields uh, because they have been hidden. If I scroll down, we can see that address is uh, is grayed out. CD is um, it's just read only. And if I go up to the menu here, and then statistics is grayed out. If I go to let me do the customer top ten list. Working on it. And we get a report and we can see that, oops, those customers are gone again. So that is the, the user experience of, of having uh, the security applied. It's important to mention that filters are only applied on the first level. Meaning that it's applied in the in the UI, it's applied on, on report first level. But if you have a processing thing, uh, a processing uh, code unit or something that goes deeper, then security features are not applied to that. If you want to do that, your your partner can help by applying uh, filtering on on anything deep down, but out of the box. Filters uh, are only applied on the UI and the first level on reports. That is the uh, advanced cloud security app for Business Central. Um, you can try out everything I have done here. You can try out in the sandbox. Uh, go to App Source, install the app in the sandbox. Everything is available you, for you. You can try it out. And uh, there are links below if you want to read more about it. And uh, I hope you uh, create some cool security. Thanks for watching.